Hey guys, welcome to another part of the beginner C Sharp series. So we're going to be looking at adding a new game mechanic today, and this is going to be looking at when our health gets to a particular value, i.e. zero, we're going to die, or the player's going to lose, or there's going to be some condition there that's going to cause us to lose, and we'll bring up a little pop-up, and we'll be able to restart the level. So I'm going to show you this in our code as a... Um, an example of how you should implement it rather than implementing it say in the update function and checking it all of the time. So if you've been following along with my project in a way you can look at your script which causes damage. Now every time you take damage you can see that we update the player's health because we do the damage and then we update the health in the health controller script because we need to update the UI so we can exactly show what's going on all the time. Now that's a case of it will only update that UI when we're actually going to a trigger. We don't want to say, do it. we could do it like this, we could just say void update and then have it and say that if player health is ever less than or equal to zero as such, we can say then, you know, something here which is death. Now that's all well and good, but it would be checking all of the time for if player's health is zero. Now it's not really a problem because our code doesn't really do much and it's not very intense. But for the sake of showing you good practice, if you can avoid using an update method which checks all the time, do so. So like I was saying that we only need to check if the health is zero if we actually update it or collide with those triggers. So how could we do it? We could put it in our update method. So only when we update the UI do we say, oh, okay, what's actually the health at this point? So what we could do is under here, we could just put a few line breaks and, and say, just like what we're going to do in the update method, if health, if player health is less than or equal to zero so in this case we're using an operator for less than or equal to because we want it to be either zero or if for some reason we go below zero we can do that don't just have it as below zero because it's not accurate enough so it's always less than or equal to zero if it ever hits zero then we're going to update our ui that we've got or in fact pop up a ui and say that you're dead. But what do we usually want to do when, say, a player dies? We want to make sure that you cannot move anymore. You cannot move your player, you cannot do anything. So realistically, we want to disable our input script. So in that case, what we could do is because it's a separate script, we can just reference it at the top like we were doing before. So we can say serialize field private, and then we can call this player controller because that's the reference to our script, and call this my player controller script or something like that just so we know exactly what it is. I will copy that there and say my player controller dot enabled equals false. And in this case if we need to disable a script we can say dot enabled equals true or false just like we had set active for a game object. But in this case you don't put anything in brackets, you just set it to directly true or false and it'll turn it off or on depending on what you want to do. And then here we want to uh, show new UI and what we can do is we can go back into unity and create this so what we can do is go onto our canvas what I'll do is I'll press F to zoom into my canvas I'll just go into 2d mode at the top and zoom into the the just the image that I've got I'll get rid of the background by pressing the little button at the top which gets rid of any effects now what I can do in my canvas is right click go UI choose panel which is something that I like to use, and panel is just sort of a grey, an opaque box. And we could possibly just hold shift and scale this down slightly so we get something like so. Position it into the very centre of the screen by using the guides. So it can be something like this. We could click on the colour and increase the colour slightly, just something like that. I could possibly just extend the width of this. And we can change whatever we want, we could change it to say a red and then inside our panel we can choose right click the panel choose UI and choose text and then I'll make the text box bigger make the text bigger again I will change this to white again this is purely ex uh, me rushing through it as a pure example and I can use the center guide to place it around there I can set it to center and centered and we could say you are dead and we could just make this slightly bigger 
again and make sure it's still centered that and there we go there's our little pop-up and we could just add a button to it right click the panel choose UI and then choose button and then from there we could make this bigger and set the text and make it bigger and then we could just change this to restart and then we can just select on our button again go across and we can just centralize this with the bottom and what we could do is essentially change the color of our button however we like and we could change the highlighted color to like our game and a highlighted blue so if I just quickly press play you'll notice here that I've got the restart button and I can click it so that's all well and good because we could rename the panel to restart game to make this easier and we could just hide that so it's not visible anymore so we can just activate that when we need it so we can go back into our script and then make a reference because we've already got using unity engine.ui at the top make a reference to that object and we can just say private game object because a game object this time this game object is just going to be set active we don't need to be specific on what actual type of um, item we give it and we just call this restart UI something like that and then I can copy this paste restart UI here and say dot set active in brackets false with a semicolon and what this means is like in that instance to activate a script use dot enable to do a game object use dot set active so it's just slightly different so when we get zero health it'll bring up that pop-up it will disable our player movement and then we will be able to press that button but you will say to me how do I then actually do something with that button how do I make it restart the level how do I do something like that now it's fairly simple what we can do is say using unity engine dot scene management and scene management is just a way to shorthand reference the scene management and realistically we could create a new script and put the UI functionality in new script but for the sake of this I'll just show you how the functionality works and you can put it into a new script if you so wish so we can write another public void and we can call this restart button two brackets then two curly brackets below so what this is we're making a public variable because we're going to want to access that within the button of the UI which will we will add a sort of event an on a click event too so then what we can do is scene manager dot load scene and then in brackets and then in quotes we can specify the string of the scene which we've got but what we can do rather than doing that we can just put in a variable which would be a string value that we're going to we can specify in the inspector so we don't have to hard code it into our script we can specify it in the inspector so we can just say my level with a semicolon on the end and it will complain because nothing exists currently so we can just write in square brackets serialize field again and we'll say private string as my level so in this case a string like I mentioned before is a bunch of characters and we specify a string for the level because it's just a bunch it's just a name of something so we can go back into unity again click on the health controller and you can see that there's a slot for my level if you go to file build settings you will see that the build settings are here and you need to place any scene that you choose to move to or move from into here so you can always move back and I can just add my tutorial scene to here and that will be accessible by the build settings and if you choose to build your game so you always got to make sure that it's in build settings or back on our panel click on our button and you can see here there's an on click event if we add a plus we can choose an object which is looking for so we can add the health controller to here and we'll be asking for what function do you want to use so I'm going to go inside the health controller and we'll find that function that we specified which is restart button so that's added to that on the click and we'll add to our health controller we will add tutorial scene as the name of the actual 
that level we're going to move to and you need the restart UI which is the restart game object and you will want to add your player controller so it be your player which will have the controller on it and we'll test the game and you can see that I've currently got five health in the corner what I can do is I will run into the heel and I'll get nine I will run into the actual ones that will damage our player and when we get to this we will get that we need to restart and we won't be able to move anymore and as the player was still moving it went over some things and it was updating the UI as it was going along and you can press restart and you can see that my ball now starts at the beginning of that level because it's restarted with the same value and the joy whichever way you look at it if you see it as a joy or not is finding out little ways to fix these things that you need to now fix so in this case our every time we went over all the triggers it was updating our health all of the time what we could do in that case is and at this point now when we actually have been killed essentially we could set the player or the character that we have we could change the tag to something else like untagged which would mean that it's not tagged as player anymore so the actual objects can interact with it and don't know that we're still looking for player and if it's not got a tag of player anymore it won't update the UI and also we could also say that when the player health is less than or equal to zero we're going to make sure that the player health in the UI is always set to zero and we don't go below and we don't go to minus one it always has to stay the same so that's pretty much just the be all and end all of creating and adding simple functionality to detect whether your player or a value of something is below a certain amount and doing something along with it disabling scripts disabling a game object thinking about the theory behind it for just eyeing out eyeing out little issues about how you could get around not having these other things still activate once you've disabled it accessing a button and being able to write some simple code to just reload another level really simple really easy but can go a long way to helping you do a lot of things so thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers